Hey everybody, I'm Bob. I'm Charlie. This is Bourbon and Balls. We have a special edition. Yes, uh, we are doing beer and balls this week. Yes, that's right, that's right. We want to thank Beth O'Hare and Wes. You. All right. I, 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 you know, all right. Put the names on the bottom. Of the yeah, exactly. So uh, we are at New Ales. Yes. Um, if uh, you guys want it, we'll ask some questions as far as that, um, how you guys came to be all that kind of stuff, but uh, they are, would you consider it like a microbrewery? I don't know anything about it, that's the thing. I know nothing. Nano. Uh, everyone's got craft. a craft word for it. It's definitely craft. Okay. Definitely, craft. Craft. definitely craft. All right. So Bob, if you want to. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. We hope this helps you. We brought, we brought a little little crew. I'll maybe yeah. take a picture of them. <laughs> Thank you, crew, for showing up. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Too busy drinking here. here. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Here we go. It gets a little crowd noise going. So, and you guys are at newer location here. You just moved from Man uh, to Manchester Avenue here in Middletown. Yes, June 1st. And uh, you came from First Avenue? Yes. All right, all right. So was, let's start back, right, to the history of it. So how did you guys get started and, and uh, experiences, backgrounds, and all that stuff? Well, all right, I'll start. So we, we I got started four or five years ago uh, making beverages for a big company that no one seems to like. They, they tend to steal everyone's water. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I worked for them. And, we need names. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave them alone. <laughs> we definitely won't. Some people might say it's messy. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Other right, people are saying Right, right. Gotcha. That's um, not, yes. So gotcha. I started working for that company and uh, they taught me to teach, they, they taught me to clean stainless steel. So okay. I got pretty good at that and then, uh, that's when I jumped the ship out of the, the private industry and went to a brewery and I actually started working at Lock 27 in Dayton. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I worked there for two years and then uh, I didn't like the owner, the owner didn't like me. One way or another, uh, I didn't work there anymore. Okay. <laughs> went back to the private industry and then started this on the side. So I went from quality manager to quality manager at a brewery. Okay. Uh, I took over brewing a little bit there and then went back to quality manager life and came here and started this. All right. Excellent. How long have you guys been in existence? Three years. Three years. It'll be three years total in January. I gotta, I gotta admit, you guys have done a lot in three years. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, I'm thinking you're gonna tell me, like, longer than, I don't know why I thought you guys been in business a lot longer, just because you guys have done so much. I mean, we, so we started out, uh, started out playing trivia together. Uh, actually, got the idea for the brewery going uh, thanks to some some friends down in Cincinnati. Uh, we tried to get a beer on tap there, but when we started, it was we put our application in for the liquor license in 2019, and okay. in about the fall, <laughs> it got approved in January. Um, of okay. 2020. So okay. we, we had a great time. We in October because we were, we now, were tears in each other. Process, you think? That's right. It's just the timing was weird because we got uh, started and then COVID happened. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. And, I wonder. At that point, our, our whole business model was we were going to do distribution only. We were going right. to. Okay. We were working out of a two-story yellow house, yeah. uh, and the idea was about 900. We're just going to fill this entire place with fermenters okay. and push beer out to our local yeah. local brewery or uh, local bar. Yeah. And restaurants things like that. So we were in the game for about two months, three months, and then we were pushing beer out to Eastern Ohio. We had beer up in Columbus, and uh, so you're running everywhere. Yeah. Oh yeah, we because we didn't have to worry about taproom hours. Okay, uh, and then all of our customers got shut down. Okay. Uh, oh, all right. So that so kind of forced you. So that's how the Yellow House takes place. It's, all right. Because yeah. you guys have both been there. You, right. You knew yeah. the atmosphere we were working with. We, we could see eight people inside of that yeah. building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else was in the backyard. <laughs> and that's that's how that got started is that wasn't supposed to be a tap room. Right. And uh, one day we just turned around and was like, I guess we're filling growlers now. Yeah. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> so, and you, and you guys did a wonderful job with that backyard, too. I must Thank say, you. it was very nice. So, would you say, like, if COVID happened a year before, I would imagine it would have even changed your guys' system. Like, licensing and all that kind of stuff. I can only imagine that. If it happened delayed. a year before, I don't even think we would have. I don't think we would have been able to entertain brewery. it. Yeah. yeah. So, you guys got into just the nick of time, perhaps. The part getting into it, I'm granting you had a It kind of forced your direction. Yeah. It, yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah. Usually, when the article or the news comes out that we started in January, January and then all of a sudden COVID happened. It, it's almost like a blessing in disguise. Right. We weren't planning on having a tap room at that point. Okay. All of a sudden we had a tap room. Um, okay. This was always our bigger vision was to have a tap room. People could sit indoors. Right. <laughs> we right. could have yeah. Whether or not 
kind of yeah. stuff. So it's yeah. great, right? Right. It just uh, yeah. it sped that up a little bit. So. Okay. All right. Everybody misses the outdoor space, including us. Um, it's back. The the yes. Yeah, so, I heard there were there were some plans for that. There are yeah. plans. Yeah. So uh, what does that what does that look like, perhaps? Uh, kind of out front. Outside, where it's sunny okay. and. Uh, originally, it was kind of where we were sitting. We were going to take this wall and knock some. Uh, we were going to put some garage doors in it. Oh, okay. Uh, this wall gets a little hot, so okay. we were going to forego the heating and cooling expense oh, okay. there. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. The sun likes to set right on that wall. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we we're actually going to go out front towards the street more. We're, we're also on a one-ray road, so it's a little awkward for people getting here. It's a little hard to find. Yeah. So we're going to put a beer garden out front. When you're driving by, you won't be able to miss it. We're going to have some picnic tables out there, some umbrellas, some awnings. Oh, get really, our springtime should be. Okay. Everyone's going to have a sour in New England IP. So, okay. <laughs> so, speaking of you guys, what you guys are offering, yeah. um, I noticed, you know, I've been in here quite a few times. I've noticed that um, it, it changes throughout oh, yeah. here. Yeah. So explain as far as your reasoning for that, and obviously it keeps it all fresh yes. uh, and whatnot. So how does that whole process work? And how I'd say new. The idea new. to... Aha. Uh-huh. Well, well, from time to go from the idea to the table, how long does that take? Uh, so we, we can turn a beer grain to glass in about two weeks, which okay. is average. Uh, all right. Some beers are quicker, some beers take a little more time. I'd like to think we keep four beers on tap consistently. That was going to be my question because I know for me, my, my lows are the country drinker yep. and and, and um, the summertime especially the post mow lawn. Mm-hmm. Right. I know those two are kind of standard. Those, so what are the those other? two stay on most of the time? Um, the other two are hot chowder okay. and still not as good. Okay, um, that one's down right now just because we ran into some hop issues getting the uh, so. supply chain up to it. Okay. But, uh, those are the four we keep on. Everything else on that menu is. Turn it up. Seasonal. <laughs> yes. It's what I have the ingredients for. Okay. It's what I'm in the mood to make. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. so I got to admit, I, I'm not a, and, and, and Beth knows this, I'm not a, I've never been a craft beer person. Never been, right. ever. Um, I guess until I, I came here and I kind of kind of maneuver my way through yes. it. Um, yeah. things like that. But I've got to, like, you all, you all, like, <laughs> anybody that's local, <laughs> just mimosa beer, right? Yeah. This is the, probably the best I've ever had. The mimosa is good. I, I'm, Holy Moses. I love the Moscow Mule. Yeah, I yes. tried it yet, so I need to try that. It's yeah. delicious. It you is. got a couple of Moscow Mule sounds over there, and they, they love it. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, the idea of this is yeah. just, I've never seen this before in any other place, at least from my knowledge. And that's, just to clarify, that is not a liquor license. That is a mimosa beer. Right. It is yeah. a Moscow Mule beer. Um, we don't have a liquor license. Yeah. Uh, and this is a way to... Introduce beer to non-beer liking like folks. Yeah. Uh, that it, it, it also is gluten free. It gave us a gluten free option on the menu. Okay. Um, so, so how many re- reiterations does it take for you to get to what you like? Uh, I mean, it, on that one is number two. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, most of the beers when they go up, it's the first time I've ever brewed it. Wow. So you don't go through a whole lot. Of it. You already have the idea in your head and it works out that way? Yeah. Um, That's pretty amazing. He's I, an evil I like genius. to keep nope. it. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, I'm serious. I'm thinking like, yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, like no, seven or eight no, times. No, I'm right, because I've heard brewers, and I've heard podcasts before where people are, you know, we went through three years of Yeah, R&D exactly. There you are. Like, of course, just right. I, uh, my background is not brewing. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's cleaning and it's biology. And okay. if I can... The brewer, I think it's overhyped a lot. Um, you think? A little. <laughs> uh, only because all we do is make sugar water. You're um, being pretty humble there. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, Two years. It's hard to make good sugar water consistently, but it's easy to make sugar water. Um, from that point, it's the yeast... It's the yeast taking it from that point. It, it, okay. You're, you're passing off to a biological process. If your biology is wrong, your beer doesn't taste good. And that's where you would lose well, the Well, the consistency is, and he is being humble, yeah. um, clean tanks, clean lines. You can tell, and he's taught me this, I can walk into a brewery and drink a beer, and I can tell that the lines are dirty or the tanks have a thing. Really, right? really, really. Drink that's, a beer. That's, that's interesting. Beer. Side so what would you know? I'm just curious, and maybe you guys would know. I got to get the interruption for now, yes. Charlie. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, what would taste? <laughs> I, my, everybody's taste is going to be different. Like, what they taste is going to be different. Like, I'm just going to say, one of our beers, strawberry lime goes on. This is going to tell you how different our taste buds can be. I taste the lime right away. A lot of people taste the strawberries right away. So my taste buzz when it's a bad beer, the best description is dishwater. 
Okay. okay. If it tastes like dishwater, I can almost imagine that it's a clean cleaning issue in the tanks or the or the lines. Interesting. Uh, it's, it's a gift and a curse. So, yeah. <laughs> in, in, a lot of my dad tells me this every day. And it's, it's the more I hang out with you, all of a sudden I don't like these other beers anymore. <laughs> but I'm like, well, it's, it's a gift and a curse. So, because I mean, I've been on, I've been on sensory panels and, and like actual sensory testing for these larger companies. Oh, wow. and they're giving me lunch boxes to go home with and if I don't come back and pick out the off flavors that they spike things with, I get kicked off the pan. Oh wow. So it's it's a oh. pass or fail test, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden once you get to a point where you're you're you know what those off flavors are and you uh, taste them and you know how to prevent them. Uh, they go away. Gotcha. So, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, I had a friend I brought here maybe just a couple months ago, and he's he's brewed before. And I won't mention any names, but he's done brewing with another group at one point in time, and he just kept speaking to your quality. Yeah. And that's and that's I didn't quite follow what he was saying, but now you've kind of explained that to me. I understand what he yep. means by that. that. That's what I tell everyone is there's a big difference between making good beer and making good beer again. Uh, yeah. Is that if you can come back and do it exactly the same way, mm -hmm. that's what sets you apart. Gotcha. And one of the things we talked about years ago when we first started meeting is, um, and I'll order a beer this Wednesday, and next Wednesday I come back order the same beer and it tastes totally different. And consistency is a big thing for us sure. so although the beers change when they come back around they're going to taste exactly this summer when you have the plum or the strawberry lime unless he does make some changes which he does occasionally an intentional it, change yes yeah, right. unless it's an intentional change right it'll be the exact same beer you tasted last year you like the limonardo dicaprio yes Every year, it's the same. It's the same. He doesn't change that. One. Yeah, there's no, there's no seasonal drift. There's, the water chemistry is tested every okay. three months religiously. Yeah, that is that the whole process. Oh, I don't know it's, it's deep too. We can talk about calcium. <laughs> we can talk about magnesium. Don't go, don't get me started on salt. I I <laughs> if he get together with your friend that does his own uh, bourbon brewing, they could have like a oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I can only imagine what this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you did you major in biology at all? I'm a uh, bi microbiology. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, then next time I studied in. A, I, I worked for Miami Valley for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, I worked in their like uh, medical microbiology lab. Okay. Um, as of late, it was building micro labs for breweries and water companies. Okay. So, would you say? I mean, that's an essential part of what I. I it's it's not essential to brewing. It's essential to quality. Right. You know, if you're if you have that's a you, great line. They coexist. Yeah. All of a sudden, we're if you can tell me that you're pitching that your yeast that you're putting into a beer um, is always accurate down to. 100,000 cells, which seems like a lot, but you're, we're pitching billions of cells. Okay. Uh, that, that kind of consistency is, it's hard to achieve, um, but it's worthwhile. Okay. All right. Very good. And I have, I have a question out of your selfishness, okay? okay. I, I like, I don't know if you use the term variety, varietal, like you do in, with wine. Like, I love every variety of beer. Except I'm not a huge style. Fan. Style, okay. Yeah. Style of beer. I've never been a huge fan of IPAs, but I don't hate them. Mm -hmm. The only one I've ever had that I really like. It's one of yours and it hasn't I haven't had it in a long time. But it's um, Mars water or water from Welcome Mars. back, my friend. Oh, yes. <laughs> I kept it today. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I guess you want one now. Yeah, I, do. <laughs> I am that's I am great. And one of our regulars is here who this is one of our favorite beers. Oh okay. um, and was that planned? That wasn't planned. No, no, that's great. Because I've said, I've said something to her in the past when you guys were at the other place. I'm like, when is that coming back? Yeah. yeah. But what is what is it that's different about that? That Can I you explain to them what exactly you're talking about exactly. It's, it's an IPA and it's called Water from Mars. Or Mars Water is that called, what it is? Uh, water from Mars. Water from Mars. Mars. Okay. Water from uh, Mars. Originally yeah. back at Yellow House, that started out as um, a single single hop galaxy New England. Okay. So we wanted to brew a hazy IPA. We wanted it to be galaxy because we had some galaxy. It's a it's a hop that is grown in Australia. Okay. Um, so it's a little little novel here, um, okay. and then I, I think years one and two, the first two times I brewed it, we used the same recipe and everything. It's pretty strict. Uh, this red, this one was a little different. Um, before it was kind of based off of our normal New England hop chowder that stays on all the time. Okay. Uh, so it's that same brew, 
different dry hops. Um, this yeah. time we branched it off. We we did a different malt bill. We used different yeast in it. Um, I kind of livened it up a little bit on the hop side, added some more Galaxy. Um, the boil is now Citra only, so it's only Citra and Galaxy hops. Uh, I, I, different yeast. It, it turned out really good this year, and I know it's going to go away in about two That's weeks. That's crazy. Right now, I don't. <laughs> uh, it'll be coming out this one. Drink that. Once I, well, what I was drinking <laughs> was the mimosa. What, what exactly were you no, This is the Country Dreamer. Country Dreamer, okay. Yeah. All right. that's, water, water from Mars. <laughs> yeah, that, that's water from Mars. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yes. Yeah. That is too funny. Um, and I got, a, I got a lighthearted question to ask. Sure. Who comes up with the names? Or is that a team thing? If it's you guys a team have some thing. great names, it's so, okay. Yeah, it all just right. depends. I mean, we bounce stuff off each other all the time. Okay. Um, we actually, the last two years, technically, uh, our, our, staff, our, staff our staff named them. So, we, uh, so Santa's favorite cool. puddle. Bartenders, uh, <laughs> Beth will text me. I, a lot of people will text me their names, or I'll think of one while we're having a conversation, and I'll add it to the list, keep a list on the phone. And I would love to see the ones that did not make it. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki, oh, kind of X names no, a lot. Yeah, no, it's, oh, we cut on it, so we're good. Um, so what are some ones that didn't make that? I'm curious. Um, we can get sweatpants swagger on, you know. We got sweatpants swagger. It's our brown ale. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. I, I had that one. Uh, so why is he looking that up, guys? So, for instance, he has hot chowder. Yep. Santa, Santa's favorite hoe. Yep. Married crisis. Yeah. It's a spice ale. Yes. Sunny with a chance of eggs. Explain that one. You got to explain Sunny that one. with a chance of fog. Oh, oh. my eyes are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like eggs. I was like, egg? No. Oh. Well, at first That's I was like, do I need to look up there and see if That's it smells uh, No, we, we, we tend to post whenever there's an allergen in a beer. Egg would be one of those, but um, also okay. lactose. If you come and there's lactose in a beer, we will let you know. So, okay. Okay. Uh, What's safe, food safety. What is that? Person. Persimmon. What is what? I'm so uh, my, my uncle down in Dry Ridge, Kentucky, actually had about three persimmon trees on his farm, and uh, it's a it's a fruit. I've never actually heard of it. Um, okay. All I know is when I go down to opening season for deer camp in Kentucky, yeah, um, he makes me come back with two five gallon buckets of persimmons. And so you've tried. And he, so you've I had to make beer with it. That was the deal. So so I made beer with his persimmons, and uh, I think we're down to the last five gallons. You are like the mad scientist. <laughs> that is awesome. That is. And then you have starter fluid. Yep, copper. It's our Kolsch, um, and then we, we put some coffee beans. Okay. Uh, cold, cold introduced coffee beans. And then post mo blonde, which is yeah. actually, a, is that your best seller? Year round? Yeah, year round. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about yeah. Yeah. Bob talks about it a lot. Well, I have trouble when I come, I come with trying something new in mind, especially in the summertime, and then I'm hot, I just want that. It's just a great, to me, it's a great summer beer. It's a great, <laughs> it's a great, people, cool, y'all. Yeah, you know, they get messed up with the name a lot. And that's, yeah. it's like Post Malone, Post, you know, the lawnmower beer. We well, the lawnmower beer. It's, it's Post Malone. Post Malone. It's a beer you want after you mow the lawn. And which, right. either, which of these are your newest releases? Obviously, the Water from Mars. Uh, that was today. That was today. The today. Persimmon Ale would be second place. Yeah, the one, okay. That uh, was, I think, last week. Okay. And then, then how often? Yeah. Um, and still not feeling anything. Uh, there's probably a week average, probably a new beer, if not weekly, um, most by week. And then I gotta ask, how long you can keep this bad boy around? It depends on how fast people drink it. Okay, that's easy. <laughs> that means it's coming up out. That we're gonna... <laughs> yeah. It depends on how much I planned on people drinking it faster than they do. Yeah. I guess right. is, is the bigger. I think ideally it's something that we will try to keep on as much as possible. Those those were, were I think the plan is to keep up mimosa and the Moscow Mule, okay, um, and then rotate a third of uh, kind of mixed drink idea, okay. whether it be um, a margarita or or something closer to. Uh, Rotten Coke. Mojito. Okay. Something. Okay. We, we haven't, Ooh, I haven't quite figured out how to do dark liquor yet. I've, okay. I've thought about taking that, that base that we use for that and aging it in a charred oak barrel just to see what happens. To see if I can simulate some bourbon beer. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Can you get us some bourbon barrels, by the way? I wish we could. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, uh, we're going to take a quick uh, bathroom break. Okay. Um, check out a few things, and we'll be, uh, we'll be right back for another segment of uh, Beer and Balls. All right. All right. We'll be right back. Everybody, back, everybody, we're back. We're going to have a little more fun to wrap things up. We also want to talk about your partners here that uh, you brought in with you and uh, how good the pizza is. Yes. Because they, too, are craft in a sense. Very craft pizza, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, um, 
I don't know where we left off. I went to go, by the way, I went to go get a uh, another drink. This is a Moscow Mule. Not to get confused with the liquor part, right? It's because of the beer. I told him, I swear to God, and I might put that in there, but this this should be called, I can't believe it's a beer. Because <laughs> um, this is freaking fantastic. Um, this is great. Uh, you did a great job. Thank you. Man, this, this is like spot on. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan. Okay, that was That's number two. Uh, but really, I don't think I, I don't think I changed it. I think number one was the winner. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Freaking so far. <laughs> All right, Bob. Take it away. Well, no, I think the other thing I was, else I was going to ask you guys about. I know you've been having some events. Um, yes. I've got them on Facebook sporadically. So if you kind of let, I thought it'd be good to let everybody know what what you're having on a regular basis here. What's uh, coming up? If you got any unique ones that are coming up? Every Tuesday we do Singo. Tuesday Singo. Thursday's trivia. Uh, Weekends are football. Okay. Wednesday we are about to start up uh, actual bingo again. Oh, okay. Uh, we did it for a little bit. We didn't do it for a little bit. We're going to start doing it again. We got uh, it all up. Kicks iron out. Working with the charity. That'll be our, our local kind of oh, high school kind of thing. Um, it'll, be, it'll be fun. So yes. our aim is to have something going on every day of the week. Fridays right. are live music. So other than the weekends where we just got football going on, that, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, How long are you guys open? I'm sorry. Uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Yeah, our only day off is Monday. Wow. The yeah. <laughs> same with Steel City. They're open when we're open, basically. Yeah. Oh, I'm having, is this the garlic knots? So those oh, are yeah. the garlic knots. I These think are freaking amazing. Is that pepperoni? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. They're good in pepperoni. They're good in sauce. And, I, and I'm a fan of the blast furnace pizza myself. That's what I eat. <laughs> it's spicier the better. Blast furnace. A little bit of grizzled honey. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like good stuff. Neapolitan. It's a Neapolitan pizza. Uh, everything that they do is scratch made. Uh, I'll be here at 7 in the morning making beer, and they're here at 7 in the morning making dough. Wow. So everything that they do is, is very on par with what we produce on the beer side. We, we try to both keep our things like artisanal to our okay. the way we're doing things. Sure. We try to not let it be influenced too much. So. And I've noticed they've taken on some of your guys' names of the yeah. beer yeah. and yeah. do their, their, their pizza. I know we're past Thanksgiving now, the oh, which, by the way, I know we're past Thanksgiving, but... Uh, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm elated about these kind of drinks, but your guys is most, at least I think it's really your most it famous is. beer, mm-hmm. right? Definitely one of the most popular. Which is, go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> oh my God, Becky, look at that pumpkin. <laughs> that Becky pays our bills. <laughs> Becky pays the bills. <laughs> that, is, that is a pumpkin ale. I'm telling you guys, that is the most delicious thing. And again, it's coming from a guy who does not like beer. Like I, I, I hate, I hate, I'm gonna say, I hate dinners. I hate anything dark. Um, I just don't like beer, period. Um, I just never have. Uh, but you can't say pop. that anymore because... No, not anymore. Right. Yeah, yeah you're drinking well, with Moscow Mule beer. Like that? And fucking beer? And well, <laughs> I mean, even go back to... Leonardo? Uh, yeah. Leonardo was great. Um, I mean, you guys are really... I mean, you guys are doing it. Like, I don't, I'm not doing it. I'm not saying this you saying it, but I'm being honest. Like, this is really dangerous. This is why we didn't have Charlie test a lot of stuff on air because... He will turn his nose up because he's not a beer guy. Well, here's the thing: is I completely agree with you. Um, since we started at Yellow House and since we moved over here and introduced craft pizza, our issue is never the product. Oh, I did not. Uh, our issue is letting people know we're here. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I've had people tell me that they don't want to spread the word because they like it being so private. <laughs> oh no, no, it's, no, it's, no, no, it's, no, no, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I don't want to tell anyone you're here because I like it. I want to keep it to myself. Like, you know what's funny about it? It's like the analogy of like I would like uh, like new music artists. Uh-huh, yeah, and, and you see them at Bogart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You pray to God they don't get too big, and then they go to stadiums, and, it's, and they're like, "Oh man, everybody knows about now." Yeah. So it's kind of like you guys, but it, it, that's the way our customer base that I'm referring to felt when yeah. we moved out of the Yellow House. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, they were they were like riding the top of bag. You know, if it was January third, it was snowing, and for some reason I was standing behind the bar, then they would be there. <laughs> um, it, it's just it's funny how that, that customer base reacts. So the bigger you get, all of a sudden you keep losing those smaller people that were with you from the beginning. Like, you, know, you stayed the same, though, right? We feel like, yes. Well, we've stayed the same, and, and we've taken a lot of those people with us. We haven't really lost them. Yeah. So, I mean, I would imagine you guys had an um, option to go elsewhere, but you guys chose to stay in Middletown. Yes. And I guess and that had a was big place. Yeah. Right? We, we love it here. We love our customers. Um, and I don't even like to call them customers because they're friends. I mean, we, right. yeah. we've been in each other's homes. We've been, you know, those kind of things. Um, and, you, and you feel that, even at the other place, you know, and here, you feel... 
to feel the boat, yeah. you know. Middletown is definitely a, a sense of community that I would I would be lacking elsewhere. Um, if I walk down to the city building, people know my name. Okay. Um, it's they just small enough. Yeah, they, they might yell at me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm a lifer. To be honest with you, I've heard. You know, I've gotten as far as Franklin Township, I think. Um, but um, oh yeah. You know, with people who don't know, this is the old social security building, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. If, if, if you've been here a long time, you remember back in the day, this is the old social security we, we, building. So, so we were building out in here, and we still had the windows boarded up, and uh, we probably did four or five months of build out before anyone knew where we were even here. Wow. Um, and then we had people from across the street. There's an apartment complex across the street, and we had every once in a while someone would walk their and put their head in and be like. What's going on in here? Yeah. I'm just like, we'd be in here working at 6 30 at night on Adderall and shit. And I'm just like, hey, what's going on here? Well, I'm just saying, I didn't say that. He said, he said, I heard they were opening up the uh, the welfare office again. And I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm like, it's going to be a brewery. And I'm just like, oh, well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it was, it was fun getting to interact with the community on that small scale basis uh, sure. while we were still here with the bo- windows boarded up. So the only people that knew we were coming was the people that lived next door. Um, the police found out. They came in here and started. They walked in a couple different times when we were over here cooking pizzas on plywood tables and saw horses. Uh, okay. It was fun. We a couple days the door got left open. They thought people were breaking in. So they're, they're walking in. And, uh, okay. Here we are pulling pizzas out of the oven, passing a joint around. So. <laughs> It's one of those things. So. Uh, just for my boss's sake, I wasn't here when that was happening. <laughs> Full disclaimer. Yeah. So, five years, uh, speed up five years from now, where's New Ales at? Uh, well, if I had to put money on it, a bigger brewery by the highway, uh, distributing to smaller breweries that still exist. Okay. I like... I like the small brewery vibe. Yes. Yeah. Um, this this is just cozy enough and just busy enough to sustain itself. Yeah. Um, the brewery definitely needs to be a lot bigger if we want to expand. Right. So right. I think the easier thing to do is to expand into a larger brewery and then just we'll use this as a small scale test kitchen. Uh, okay. We'll do weird stuff with Sour it. Sour house. Yeah. And then uh, the bigger brewery we we'll able to push people back down to this. Okay. So I think that'd be a nice level, right? This yeah. 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 And that's what everyone asks. Where can we find it? Right. And it's, I mean, it's nice, and it's, but I'm like, come here. This is where you're going to find it. Right, right, right. You know? you like to have it at home sometimes, or maybe you can't make it. Which, by the way, I still have, like, a can left, and that was it, of, uh, of pumpkin ale. Yeah, I got, a, I got an email uh, from somebody else that we worked with the other day, and they said, how much longer is pumpkin going to last? And I said, you're about a week and a half. <laughs> I had a guy walk in on Thursday. I think we sold out on Wednesday. He walked in on Thursday. And he just like coming back to the room like, hey, do you know anyone that has some that like maybe I could call? <laughs> you're getting, and I'm like developing a secondary market for it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Hold on to that kid. Yeah, yeah. You're like allocated. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys um, can any, any other beers, or that's the primary? We have the hop chowder in cans right now. I know. Okay. Uh, still not as bitter. We'll have in cans. Uh, what? We'll, we'll still not as bitter in hop chowder, both in cans. More so, or less full time. You guys can come down here at any time to grab that if you can't stay to yeah. enjoy the enjoy the scenery. Yeah. Although once you come here, I think you're going to realize you're going to want to stay here, honestly, yeah. and kind of hang out and just talk to the folks and. And kind of just enjoy the the camaraderie enjoy and the atmosphere. The atmosphere yep. is great put a, over here. Put a lot of work into the building. Yeah. Uh, there's a, if you get in a conversation with someone that knows about the building, they're going to talk your ear off, okay. whether it be me or Beth or okay. someone behind the bar. Our staff is amazing. I mean, you're going to get you're going to fall in love with our yeah, bartenders. We, we fired I mean. zero people and had to hire zero people. Yeah. Okay. Because we were smart to begin with. Sure. And everyone gets paid a really good wage. I don't want to be the person that's trying to slum dog my way into business. Sure. Yeah. So um, I think we're we're doing things the right way. We just work. honestly, the more people that know about us, the better. Yes. Yeah. I very good. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate you guys, and uh, I think this is a win-win. And I've and I've learned a lot. So yeah. 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 We'll come back so, anytime. All right. Yeah. Sounds great. So uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, this is uh, last episode or the beer and ball. We'll convert to bourbon and balls next week. But I hope you guys. Can Enjoy this episode. Thank you all. I'll catch you you guys next time. See See you. All right. What is that? It sounded like your mom. (laughs)
All right, everybody, I'm Bob. I'm Charlie. And this is... Beth. Hey, welcome, yeah. Beth. All right. So For this... those of you who just watched yes. the uh, yeah, watched the uh, new Ale show, we're going to keep Charlie shut up for a little bit, because God <laughs> knows. <laughs> Woo, man. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so this is nice to be able to talk with you, Beth, and have that. some conversation, and, you know, be heard on the, on the video. I was way too excited. That's the problem. When I get excited, I end up talking way too much. And okay. I, appreciate, I appreciate when people get excited about our beers and about our brewery. And, but, you know, Wes being your, your new fan first. Well, you know. And I might add, I just told you guys this off air. I went to another local establishment uh, last night, and, you know, they have some beer. and You know, pretty good beer selection. Local Lebanon. I don't want to call out my little town, Middletown. That's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah here in Lebanon. Um, but anyways, Good job. I was looking around and I'm like, man, this beer sucks. Uh, and I've just gone accustomed, grown accustomed to your guys' beer. And, yeah. and again, I'm not a craft beer, but I mean, I kind of. And it speaks to their variety. Yes. Because you're not, you're not a huge craft beer person, no. but they have stuff there that works for you. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. A, I'm a New Wales uh, beer kind of guy. Yes. That's about it. There you go. I like it. For now. I mean, yeah. we like to broaden your palate and. Teach you how to drink other stuff. So. Yeah. So, uh, what do you guys got, got normally going on like during the week in the house? We didn't even talk about that. I don't think yeah, we, oh, did. we did. We did. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. But I, I think we got it in. I think yeah. I was in a zone. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. I was like all fogged out. My all, my brain was all foggy. So, and I apologize for uh, it ended up being you know, a two man show, and I, and, I, and, I, and I apologize. Which it normally is a two man show, but it was just different two man show. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. 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 So, all right. So, uh, yes, we hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we look to maybe do more of those down the road. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody who came out. Yeah. Your, your yes, friends yes, and thank you. my friends and family, my, my Irish cousins and the, the <laughs> Rogers clan and all those that came out. We appreciate it. I'll, so I'll you, send, hold on. You Irish? I got some Irish in me, but I got a group of Irish cousins and some of them, some of the... Some of the gentlemen came out to, to join okay. us. So that was that was nice. That was right. nice. But I'll get you some of those videos too. The little tour you gave us, which was nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you did take some. of those? I did take a little bit. So I need to send you a couple more, yes. and we'll, we'll put that on here too. So yeah, very impressive. Yeah, it was a good time. It yes. was fun. It, it was, was a lot fun. of fun. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. So all right. So on today's show, yes, uh, we have a couple of things that we're going to go over. One um, is a bottle review that. It just snuck in before the end of the year. Yeah. So we're going to include this in our end of the year. And what we are doing is, is disqualifying, um, unfortunately, the uh, the Stag Twenty Two A. Yeah. We it just was, felt like it wasn't it wasn't par for the course. Yeah, yeah and, and it, it also wouldn't. ruined our bourbon brawl. <laughs> <laughs> it did because it burned our palates so bad where we thought E.H. Taylor was rare breed and vice versa. Uh, we got different notes out of rare breed that we never did before, and I think and I blame it on Stag. There you go. Okay. It, it burned the crap out of our out of our palates. Yes, yes. So but yeah, so we'll do that. Uh, so today's bottle review is gonna be uh, the twenty twenty three King of Kentucky. Yes. And we've got three of us here scoring it, so that'll yes. be different. Yeah, yeah well, so you'll learn yeah. how yeah, you'll just uh, best gonna score along with us. Um, she's been to enough tasting. She knows what she's yes. doing. She's one of yeah, the so regulars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not just a beer drinker, so yeah. yes, I'm not a professional bourbon drinker like okay. the two of you. But uh, uh, I don't know about I'm learning. learning. <laughs> just because you drink a lot, don't mean we're professionals. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so we'll, we're going to try that tonight, and then uh, we'll do our our sports and see what the results were out of that, and then uh, that'll go on another episode. Is it? It is, it is. It's going on another episode. Oh, crappy crap. You're right, man. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a good day in football yesterday, or uh, Sunday. Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, that's a different episode. He's right. I don't know. And we even went over this. <laughs> no. I had you take a picture. Well, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, all we're going to do right now is the <laughs> bottle review, right? Oh, wait, wait, one more thing. Yes. Mr. Matt. Matthew. Oh yes, um, Matthew uh, Bukowski, who was our last week's winner. Yeah, uh, we'll pour you the um, Stag Twenty Two, uh, which we'll do here today, and then this is the thing that you're going to get along with our uh, Glen Karen. Yes. So as I do that, um, do you want to go and pour that? Yeah, I'll pour that, and then and then Matthew, this is what you're going to get in the in the mail. We're going to mail this out to you. Hopefully, you'll get it by this weekend. 
That's how so. I drink it. And we do appreciate, I'm peeking in, Woo! we do appreciate everybody who participated. And we'll have another little giveaway. Woo, Charlie got ambitious. That's good, though. That's good. Nice. Well, Matthew, you got a full. Yeah, Matthew, you got a full. Completely full pour. No, Can you give me a towel? <laughs> yeah. Matthew, I, I think this, yeah, this is to the rim. Man, I love the smell of bourbon. I hope this soaks into the furniture. Oh, okay. All right. All right. He, he is set. He, you're set, Matt. And uh, you're going to get this. Tape around that yeah, I'm going to put like, yeah, make sure it doesn't leak. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get this in the mail along with our Glen Karen. Uh, and then, uh, you know, comment and let us know what uh, what you think of it. Um, because I know what I think of it. It's one of my favorite. Uh, it's in our top five. Both of our top fives, right? Yes, correct. Was it your top five? It was my number one. Ooh. What was my number one? I have to go back and look. Coy Hill was I think it was Coy Hill. So, all right, very good. So that. Uh, Matt is there. So now we have the 2023 King of Kentucky. I've never had one before. Nor I. So this is, have you ever had one? No. Most nope. of what I've had is because of you. Oh. <laughs> nice to know that. Yeah. So this is the 2023 King of Kentucky. I'll put a little blurb okay. on the bottom there. As far as, <laughs> oh, my bad. What if, I forgot we got a third person here. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Let's just, let's try this. Maybe that. All right, we're gonna put it right there. there My bad. <laughs> I'm not used to. No, I got you. All right, so we're gonna open this. We're gonna try to open uh, this up. Sounds delicious. This is this is where we might just take a little break, editing break. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Damn. Do you need a woman to do it? <laughs> Oh, I got it. <laughs> you know what? Was the motivation I handed it over to you and you'd have opened it. I would have told you why I started it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so this uh, just got into us uh, last week, I believe, or maybe two weeks ago. And we are going to do an audible and nice little whatever. And then we're going to enter this into our 2023, whoa, shit, bourbon of the year. There you go. So, all right. No. Mm. Love it. It's a healthy pour. It is a healthy pour. Well, you gotta be able to nose it. Ooh, buddy. It's a pretty color. Well, I better not do that again. I'll do that right here. There you go. There you go. All right. All right, so we're going to nose it, and then Beth is going to play along with us today, and then we're going to score it, and then uh, we'll see where it lands. That's kind of my rule. I think the next time you invite me, if you do invite me again... Well, we'll I'm, see how the ratings go. I'm going to... Yeah, okay. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> I'm going to bring the barrel 33 that you haven't yet Oh, to taste. yes. Yes. I did taste it. You gave me a sample. Did I bring in samples? Yeah, and I've been looking for it ever since. I can't find it. So you didn't taste it? What are you talking about? I oh, you mean you'd be looking we, for the bottle? Is that the you're, one? You're the, not gonna find is that it. the one you yeah, blinded no. me with? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we did thought, thirty-three yeah. and thirty-four. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And you like, guys preferred thirty-three, but right? You and then now I won't get thirty-four, even I see it on the shelf. I, I won't get no. it. It's not as good. It's good, it but it's not good. as good. It is not. As Knowing good. that I know there's a better barrel out there. So if somebody has a barrel thirty-three out there, let us know. Yeah. Feel free to contact us at bourbonball at gmail.com and we'll pay for shipping. And they'll pay for shipping. <laughs> exactly. So, all right. So, uh, all right. Onto the nose. Onto the nose. All right. All right. This is a different kind of nose. It's good. It's not harsh like I was expecting. Mm -mm. Much better than the Stag 22A. Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. This is a sweet, mm -hmm. a very sweet nose. So, what say you? I say vanilla is mm -hmm. probably what I get first. I get that too. And some honey. Yeah. Yeah. I think the honey is the sweetness that, de we, de yeah, de that we're smelling. De definitely the honey in there. It's a good Man, call. you know there's um, honey barrel bourbons out there. I would love to get a hold of. Like they're bur they're brewing, or they're they take distilling the, it in the, or not distilling it, but they're leaving it in the honey barrels. Well, they put, they double barrel it. They barrel it normally. Yeah. And then they uh, put it into is, a honey is barrel. Is it finished? Oh. Is that like a finished thing? Finished in a I, it would have to be. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, and it's still bourbon because it's natural. Almost drank it, but I didn't. Oh, I we can do one. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, we're going to 
Does it matter what letter I put this under? Uh, you can, well, it's going to be A for purposes at home, so you can put it under A whatever. for purposes at home. Yes. yes. yes we so, were, anyways. We um, no, like, she's right. Like, honey vanilla uh, is definitely what I get, and they're both prominent. Um, it's definitely not faint. Uh, no. I will say that. And I don't know what the, eth what is the alcohol context? It doesn't seem very high. Oh, shit. Okay. It is uh, 124. So I wouldn't have thought that, though. No, it doesn't smell. No. Right? There's not a lot of heat have, in have, the have, Yeah, no. right. In the okay, it yeah. might be 125. I can't do the math. 62.74%, whatever that is. That's uh, oh. 120, 124, 125. We'll call it 125. Yeah. We'll call it 125. Anybody who's watching this that knows me and saw that you just asked me a math question okay. is cracking up. All right, well, we're going to call this 125 proof. <laughs> Dude, if that comes through your nose, that'd be awesome. <laughs> and painful, I'm sure. I've saved, I've saved it this time. I've You'd be able to nose it and taste it at the same time. <laughs> All right, here you go for a taste. Now, the first thing that comes to mind for me, well, this this tastes nicely aged to me. Um, yeah, it's like there's a oak, there's an oak about it, oak with it. Yeah, it's much less sweet. I say on oak the taste a, than it was mm -hmm. on the nose. You think oak is like the secondary? You get the heat on the taste. To me, yeah, yeah, oak is like the secondary. Oh, it's a sixteen year old bourbon. That's why. That's why. Okay. Okay. So um, tastes nicely aged. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I get the I get the oak as a secondary, for sure. I'm trying to get the primary taste out of this. It's not a super sweet one, but I do get a little caramel out of the out of the front. The heat is there, mm -hmm. and it kind of takes over the sweetness, not in a bad way. No, that's mm -hmm. what I would agree. I would but agree. But I think there, I get some caramel notes on it. Good call on your part. Yeah, I would say a little caramel in the beginning, and then a little rye on the finish, maybe with a little bit of spice there at the end. It does, but it doesn't come in until later. No, to me, right. yeah, no. That it's a good nice. finish. It's that a, is yeah, a, it's a that's nice a finish. lovely finish. It's a good finish. It doesn't last as long as I was hoping. Am I still going? A little bit. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I, really? I, I'm yeah, I haven't I'm I'm don't want to taste any more. I think once the heat dissipates. Well, I mean the finish is now in my chest. It's no longer in my mouth. Mm. For me it's up at the roof of my mouth. See, I like got it in the back the, of my throat. Okay. So wrong. Yeah, towards the back towards the back yeah. of the roof of my mouth, yeah. But we're all yeah, everybody's got different palates, right? Yeah. Man, this is lovely. Man, when I start chewing it, I can taste the caramel. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Do you ever notice when you watch that we actually do that? We would chew it? I, I know I do. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't even realize I'm doing it until I watch the video. Yeah, where, chewing like, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, because it brings out more flavors, mm -hmm. at least in my mind, as far as on the taste. So. This is a really good one for me. Mm -hmm. I really, I'm really enjoying this. Probably more than I should. I'm going to rate it higher. I know when we do our tastings, I'm like very stingy. Are you because okay? Because I don't know. You know, I'm learning, okay. obviously. And I don't want to go right in saying, oh, this is a nine, this is an eight. Because yeah, uh -huh. I want to know what the next one's going to be. Right. And mm -hmm. I don't want to over and then I got nowhere to go for the next for one. The next better. one, yeah. Mm -hmm. But That's this one, point. this one's really good. Good. Well, I'm ready to add these up. You want to take a break? Well, let me do my finish. Hold well, on. this is where we take our break. Okay. Yeah. If we're going to do the math. <laughs> okay all right so we will be right back with our astute uh math you know what i messed up the math a couple weeks ago and no one caught it oh really okay i don't know what it ended up being but it, it didn't it didn't make sense because i i gave something like a eight seven point five and seven point five and then my final score was like 74 it should have been higher it should have been higher because right at no point did i did i rank at 7.4 right mm -hmm. so no mm -hmm. Did it make a difference in the outcome, though. No, we still that's still lost. Okay, gotcha. So, anyway, all right, we'll be right, we'll be right back with uh, our scores on this King of Kentucky, uh, twenty twenty three. Be right back, Bob. We'll start with you, and then we'll go around the table. Loved it all around. Nine on the nose, nine on the taste, and a nine five on the finish. I loved the finish. That has got to be your highest. Uh, it doesn't has to. Be, yeah. Everything I've listened to, that, <laughs> that's the highest I've heard you guys say. Yeah. It's lovely. I got that's a total of ninety one point five. So I just I love this bourbon. Okay. So I'm so glad we ditched the ditched yeah the stag, stag was replaced it with the stag, that for the stag was like pure fire. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. All right, Beth, go ahead. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Again, like I don't want to oversell it because <laughs> sure. I don't know what's next. Uh, Eight point five on the nose. I really like the nose. I think that vanilla hits you right away, um, and I'm a huge vanilla fan. Uh, the taste, I gave a nine. Okay. Uh, I think the taste is the once the heat dissipates, and again, it's not an overpowering right. heat. 
uh, it does linger a lot and I enjoy that you hit the caramel notes and the finish I gave an 8.0 I do really enjoy the finish a lot okay and then your total score is 86 86, 86. All, right. all right excellent well on uh, this is gonna be surprising here so on the nose I gave it a 9 I all thought right. it was a very good 9 I, I, I love your description with the honey and vanilla I think that was spot on um, and so for me the it didn't transfer over into the taste as far as especially the honey uh, the sweetness of it mm. it kind of kind of got more um, I don't know whatever the opposite of sweetness is I want to say got a little more potent got a little more potent got a little more hearty I <clears throat> yeah for so sure. I gave that an 8.5 and then I gave the finish an 8.5 uh, kind of was the it was a good finish I just wasn't the best finish I had uh, but it gave me an 86 which is the same score of look at you bad. guys I know look at you guys we didn't right. cheat no we didn't <laughs> cheat <laughs> <clears throat> so Basically, this bourbon uh, will qualify because we kind of knew going in this was going to be a, a premium bourbon. Mm. Uh, so this will go in our bracket of six, right? Mm. Uh, so in our next episode, we are going to go um, do three, do three, three and six, then three. And then the next week, the three, another three is six. Correct. Right? And then we'll go down to the final uh, four, so, and then and then we'll do a blind off of that, and then mm. we'll announce um, our 2023 uh, bourbon of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. All right. Sounds Anything good to me. else? Okay. That's all I no, got. Wait, I got one, one important question. Okay. How long will you have the uh, water from Mars? Until it's gone. Well, you, well, you, you got to make any more? <laughs> um, so, Water from Mars is a beer that we just released again. Uh, the problem with making it was getting the hops. Right. So, it is a galaxy. The first go round, it was strictly galaxy. That was the only thing we put in it. Um, and now it's got citra in it. Okay. Um, but finding galaxy hops at a price that we can afford is is the is the balance that we're looking for. All right, all right. Um, so the good news is I don't go to the brewery every day, so that saves it. <laughs> mm -hmm, gotcha. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's your way to contribute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it took us two years to make it a second time. Right. Oh, it has been a long time oh. since I had it. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping it stays around and that Wes brews it again, you know, or is able yeah. to brew it again quickly. Um, yeah. But. I, I can't guarantee you how All long right. it's going to stay. So the rest of my gang that liked that, and I know Steve, who does the football with us, he yes. was down there. He liked it, too. Okay. So we got to make sure we hit that up before yep, it goes absolutely. by. Absolutely. And right. for me, selfishly, what about the mimosa? Um, <laughs> the mimosa, I know he's going to try to keep on as much as possible. Holy crap, is, I hope so. <laughs> it's an incredible alternative if oh. you are not a beer drinker um, and you want to come and have something. We don't have a liquor license. And so I'm telling you, it tastes like a mimosa. Our magician was able to make a mimosa and a um, a Moscow Mule, yep. which was also both. incredible. And I know he's looking at a margarita beer next. <laughs> nice. So we're hoping nice. for a margarita beer next. And okay. all right. Um, but but yeah. then you guys also have. Oh, we already did all this trivia, all that stuff. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, you would remember if we were out. I was a I was a la la land. I don't. <laughs> I was like passed out. I don't remember any of this. Like the other way, you were just jazzed up. Yes. Yeah. So Tuesdays but. is Singo, which is our music mango. Okay. Wednesdays, right now, we uh, we don't have anything. We kind of mix it up, but we're looking at getting uh, bingo, regular bingo, back in on Wednesday nights. Okay. Thursday is trivia, hosted by me. Uh, Friday is live music, uh, and Saturday and Sundays right now are college football in the NFL. So gotcha. nice. Um, we'll see how things roll out once college football is done. Uh, I know we're big hockey fans there, so we'll watch that as much okay. as we can. Um, I'm a huge baseball fan, so that'll be coming up also for the weekends and weekdays. Okay. But yeah. And then soccer starts back up at the end and of February. And we are soccer fans, so. Okay. Yes, so. Excellent. All. all right, well, it looks like that wraps up this episode. Uh, until next time, I'm Charlie. And I'm Bob. And Cheese. Beth. All right, we'll catch you next time. Thank See you. Ya. Bye.